the case of the day for a girl 14 years old, known case of sickle cell disease. Before presenting the case of the day, let me give you an idea about anterior versus posterior mediastinal masses and how can you differentiate between both of them on frontal chest x-ray. First of all, the differential diagnosis of anterior mediastinal masses is thymic tumors and the most common is thymoma, germ cell tumor and the most common is teratoma, lymph nodes enlargement and the most common is lymphoma and finally the retrosternal extension of a thyroid mass. The differential diagnosis of posterior mediastinal masses is on top of the rest neurogenic tumors followed by paraspinal uh, tumor, paraspinal abscess, uh, lymphadenopathy, extramedullary hematopoiesis, etc. So how can we differentiate between anterior mediastinal tumors and the posterior mediastinal tumors on frontal chest x-ray? To do that, we have to understand the silhouette sign. What is the silhouette sign? This is the explanation of silhouette sign. This is a lateral projection for the chest. This is the heart here, ascending aorta. This is the spine posterior. So this is the posterior mediastinum and this is the anterior mediastinum. This structure is anterior mediastinal mass. So the heart is anterior structure and if we have mass here located anterior in the mediastinum, there is no lung tissue separating the mass from the heart. So in the frontal projection, we will define the mass like this couldn't be separated from the heart. Both of them, both of them appear as one structure but if we have posterior mediastinal mass like this again this is the heart this is the ascending aorta aortic arch and this one in the posterior mediastinum spine is here what is this this is the mass which is located in the posterior mediastinum here we have lung tissue separating the mass from the cardiac shadow if we see this mass in the frontal chest x-ray it will be like that this is the mass here and here we can define the lateral border of the cardiac shadow. So if we can define the cardiac border through the mass, this means that this mass is posterior mediastinal located. So we can do a comparison now between anterior mediastinal mass and the lateral projection. And in the frontal projection, it will be like that couldn't be separated from the cardiac border or by other words it is silhouetting the left cardiac border from this posterior mediastinal mass and where there is lung tissue separating the mass from the cardiac shadow so in the frontal chest x-ray the mass can be separated from the heart and we can define clearly the left cardiac border through the mass this is an example again for anterior mediastinal mass this is the cardiac border here and here we have large mass lesion. We cannot separate the mass from the heart. We cannot define the cardiac border through the mass. Also here, we cannot define the cardiac border through the mass. So this mass is located where? In the anterior mediastinum. And again, what do we have here? This is the frontal chest x-ray. And we have large mass lesion here. But here we can define the rift cardiac border through the mass. So this means that this mass is located in the posterior mediastinum because it is not silhouetting the cardiac border. Coming again to our patient today, the 14 years old girl, known case of sickle cell disease presented with cuff. Her chest x-ray revealed... Uh, this is the frontal chest x-ray of the girl. What do we have here? We have large bilateral paraspinal located soft tissue mass lesion seen in both sides of the spine but we can also demarcate this mass lesion from the cardiac shadow i mean this mass lesion not silhouetting the cardiac shadow this means that these mass is located posterior to the heart or in the posterior mediastinum so coming now how can we differentiate radiologically between anterior mediastinal tumors and posterior mediastinal tumors Anterior mediastinal tumors silhouetting the cardiac border, but uh, the
the posterior medial sternal tumor not silhouetting the cardiac border. The anterior medial sternal tumor never extend above the level of the clavicle. Posterior medial sternal tumor it can extend above the level of the clavicle. The only exception in the anterior medial sternal tumor which is which can extend above the level of the clavicle is the retrosternal extension of the thyroid tumor. So now, how can we differentiate between retrosternal extension of the thyroid tumor, which of course extends above the clavicle, and the posterior mesosternal tumor, which can also extend above the clavicle? This can be done by the cervical thoracic sign. What is this cervical thoracic sign? It is a sign used to differentiate between retrosternal extension of thyroid tumors and posterior mesosternal tumors. If you can appreciate a lung tissue separating the mass from the neck, this means it is posterior located in the mediastinum. And if you cannot define a lung tissue between the mass and the neck, and the mass is continuous with the neck shadow without intervening the lung tissue between the neck and the mass, this means that the mass is retrosternally extension of a thyroid tumor. This is the cervical thoracic sign. So our final diagnosis regarding the location of this mass is posterior in the standard location because not separating the cardiac channel and because of the history of the girl with the sickle cell anemia. Our diagnosis is extramedullary hematopoiesis. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.